Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host as always, Krabby Terror Age, and here we are in episode 42 of the season 2 of the Investigator Games with everybody's favourite magician, sorcerer and veteran, Dexter Drake. Yes, and for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome! What is the Investigator Games? Yes, it's like the Hunger Games. We take each Investigator true solo through a scenario and we see how they do. And depending on how they do, they end up in a league table like this one. Yes, and we can see, look, all of the investigators, apart from most of the Edge of the Earth investigators, are here top to bottom in uh, with their points based on how they did in the Gathering in Season 1 and then how they've done in the Midnight Masks in Season 2. Now, if you haven't seen how the investigators have done in Season 1 or indeed you haven't seen Dexter Drake and how he does in Season 1, I would probably... Uh, say it might be a good idea to have a look at that first so like I said it's a league table and then of course once we've finished um, doing the edge of the earth investigators so we will go back to the gathering we will let the edge of the earth investigators go through true solo then they will come through the midnight masks and then once all that's done we will move on to I cannot believe it season three yes season three of the investigator games in the Devara below. So, but we've still got a little way to go yet before we get there, but we are moving forward at a pace. Um, now, spoilers. If you are uh, brand new to Arkham Horror, the card game, this is the <laughs> first video you're looking at, you haven't played before, you're, you're looking for tutorial, this isn't, this isn't the right video for you. I'm assuming you know how to play a little bit. Uh, I understand that you might be relatively new to the game and you're looking how, looking at how different investigators work. That's fine, not a problem. But if you're brand new, I would suggest you stop the video now and go and find some videos which are about the tr true introduction on how to play. Um, and indeed, if you haven't played the Midnight Masks before, I would probably play it yourself first. It's a fantastic scenario. If you have played the Midnight Masks a few times, and I'm assuming most of you have, <clears throat> then um, I would very much suggest you have a look at my in-depth video of the Midnight Masks. It covers everything you could possibly want to know about the Midnight Masks, the lore, the story, strategies, gameplay, a whole lot of other content creators also um, talk about the Midnight Masks. It's really in-depth and it's really worth a look. So I would recommend you have a look at that as well. So yes, here we are with Dexter Drake, the magician. So what we'll do is we'll just have a look at his stats and stat line. We'll have a look at how I've upgraded his deck for season two, and then we can get going. So Dexter Drake, he is one of the Innsmouth Conspiracy. He is the mystic for the Innsmouth Conspiracy. Um, and we can see here his stat line, uh, as you would expect for a mystic, he's got a really, really strong uh, willpower of five. Um, his intellect is lowish, his fight is kind of okay, and his evasion is, uh, his evasion, it's not that, it's his, um, not his dexterity, his, uh, what do they call it? Well, you know what it is, vitality, I think they call it. Foot, <laughs> that's the other way to talk about it, is only two. So, in other, um, in other investigators, um, this might be a problem, but of course, Dexter Drake is a, um, a mystic, which means even though his intellect and his um, agility and even his fight are a lot on the lowish side, that kind of doesn't matter, to be honest, because you can use spells to um, find clues, you can use spells to evade, you can use spells to fight. So as long as he's got the spells on the table, as long as he's got those things, he's going to be pretty okay. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, interesting uh, around his special ability. Now, Dexter Drake's special ability is a fast action, a lightning action. 
Uh, so you can do that in a window. I think it's called a fast action window or whatever it's called. During your, but you can undo that during your turn. So you can't do it, for example, in the uh, myth, mythos phase or something like that. Discard an asset you control. Play an asset with a different title from your hand, reducing its cost by one. And you can only do this once around. Uh, that's a pretty nice ability. So what the thing that Dexter Drake can do is he can kind of juggle assets in and out. Particularly because he's a mystic, that means, you know, you can end up with, say, shriveling on the board. Um, you know, it's, it's all used up. So you uh, probably want to be able to... Um, to change it for something else. So you can do that as a fast action and you can do it for a lesser cost. So it means you can almost magically produce new, new assets onto the board. Really, really handy. And particularly if you're a mystic, as long as it's got that asset trait, you can, uh, you can do it. So really good to sort of manage. Um, you know, people like Akachi can give themselves extra... Um, um, charges on things. I guess what Dexter is able to do is when he's, once he's used up charges, he can quickly shift to something else. So having a handful of assets that he can kind of move in and out. And indeed, the other benefit of that is, you know, sometimes in Arkham Horror, you're, you're in a position where you've, you know, this can happen. You've, you've got a, a weapon or even a shriveling or something like that in your hand but it's not down on the board and you find yourself faced with an enemy and you don't want, you know, and you're in that horrible situation where do I wear the, the, the damage? Do I take an attack of opportunity in order to get something out that I can then use offensively? Well, in this case, Dexter doesn't care about that because, of course, you don't take attacks of opportunity for fast actions. So, you know, he doesn't have to worry about that so much. If it's in his hand and suddenly, um, um, you know, um, you can... You find yourself with an enemy, you can quickly, um, as long as you've got an asset on the table, that's the main thing, just as long as you've got something, you can swap it out for something and, and you, you, you're fine. So, you know, on the surface, you might think, oh, it's not that special, but actually it's a really great ability um, and it means you want a, um, a deck full of assets if possible. Um, you know, and you know, in, you know, you can use it on on um, obviously on uh, allies uh, if they're asset traded uh, and that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of ways that you can use this ability, which is really really nice. Um, his elder sign effect is a nice plus two, so that's nice and strong. And but it has an additional effect, which is you may return an asset from your play area to your hand. Then you draw a card. So you can do the thing where you bring something back to your hand, draw a card, and then you can instantly you could instantly play it again. And of course, the benefit of that is is it gets recharged. So the Elder Sign effect is real, or if it's an ally, uh, loses all its um, you know ally loses all its its damage. So there's some really nice ways the Elder Sign effect can recharge or refresh an asset that you have. So. Once again, really nice. So there's some really nice uh, synergies here with, with uh, assets and allies and those sorts of things. Do you want to see true magic? So it is almost like he's conjuring things out of thin air <laughs> in that way. Now his um, health and psychological, physical health. Yeah, his uh, psychological health is not bad at eight. Physical health at uh, six is a little bit on the lower side. I would say. So that's something you've got to be careful. I've got to be careful about that in the Midnight Masks because we can take damage from Hunting Shadow, I think it is. So we've just got to be aware that that, that can be a thing. So um, uh, yes, there is a hospital that we can help heal ourselves, but uh, you've just got to be mindful that his health is not, not the strongest. Now, if we flip the... Um, if we flip... Uh, Dexter's card to the other side we can just quickly see um, how things are for him in terms of deck building options he takes standard deck size 30 you know mystic cards 0 to 5 rogue cards 0 to 2 and neutral cards 0 to 5 so he can splash uh, rogue cards so uh, lots of good things in rogue that he can use um, that he could add to his deck as well particularly around assets you've got things like lock picks you've got some weaponry all those sorts of things. So uh, that's quite nice as well to be able to splash that. Um, we'll talk about his um, showmanship 
uh, occult scraps and uh, basic weakness when we have a look at his deck in a second. So we'll just uh, have a look at his um, backstory. Dexter Drake returned from the Great War to become a successful magician, enthralling audiences with his elaborate illusions and cunning stage tricks. Despite his meteoric success, Dexter longed to discover true magic. He was intrigued by the burnt and torn scraps of occult writing he had found during the war, fragments of the infamous Necronomicon. Dexter used his wealth to search for the truth about this ancient law, and what he found horrified him. He knows that he may well be the only person with the ability to stop evil from swallowing the entire world. There we go. Um... Yes, there's Dexter Drake for you. So let's flip him back over. Um, okay, so um, okay, so if we have a look at his deck, and I'll just talk about. Um, so um, I'm not going to go through every single card because I did that in um, season one. Now, just so you know, every investigator in the investigator games uses their standard Fantasy Flight Games starter decks, which are made up of cards from the core set, and in this case, the um, Innsmouth Conspiracy Deluxe Box. So those two card pools. So it does mean that they're not optimized, and so there's some challenges, and they're often a bit of a, a, bit of a mishmash, and um, Dexter's was, was no exception. His was a mishmash of... Um, rogue cards and um, mystic cards. So what did I do? I did a couple of things. And remember, I did these because of the Midnight Masks. So I was going to keep the Midnight Masks in mind. Time is of a premium in the Midnight Masks. So the first thing that I did was I took out the old Leo De Luca and I put in two upgraded Leo De Lucas into the deck. So if we can get Leo De Luca out early in the game or hopefully at the very beginning, um, that has a massive impact because it means you essentially have an extra three or four turn advantage, uh, assuming you don't lose uh, Leo De Luca to things like Cryptchill. It's a real asset to have him uh, there. So we've got those. I also took out the Arcane Initiate purely because I wanted the two Leo De Lucas in there. Um, the other thing that I put in was two Clairvoyance. So Clairvoyance allows us to hoover up clues relatively quickly. And so um, even though we couldn't take horror from that, I think it's, 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 it's just another way of getting clues fast. Midnight Mass is all about getting clues fast uh, as quickly as possible. The other thing is I put in another shriveling. That was a no-brainer um, because we need to take on people like the Mass Hunter and indeed other uh, people like, you know, Hunting Night Gaunts and things like that. So we've got two shrivelings. We've got two sword canes, we've got a switchblade, and we've got a knife and a 41 derringer. So we've got quite a lot of weaponry that we can use. So um, we will definitely um, be taking advantage of those. And that was all I had. He only got five experience points in the uh, gathering. He wasn't able to defeat the ghoul priest, so he didn't get the six. Uh, the ghoul priest is actually in the deck here. Uh, in the Midnight Mass. He didn't take any trauma, but he didn't defeat the Ghoul Priest in the end. So those are the things. I took out the Tides of Fate. That felt like a very um, Innsmouth conspiracy kind of card around um, <clears throat> around uh, Bless and Curse tokens and just didn't seem that appropriate for this one. Took out the Arcane Initiate. Took out Forbidden Knowledge. Uh, just not a card I'm really like that much. And then finally... It's just, just replacing Leo De Luca. So that was our five experience. So there you go. Not much of a change, really. We didn't have that much to play with, but I think we've definitely boosted the deck in terms of the possibility of getting extra goes and also from, an, from a sort of offensive perspective and also um, being able to get clues. Don't know. What do you think? Now let's just have a look at his, um, at his various um, um, special cards. Now his... Um, his special card, Showmanship, is his signature card. Um, it's a one-cost asset. Um, <clears throat> so again, because it's an asset, you can put it down and replace something else. That's important to remember. It's only got three pips, this one, obviously, with a wild card. And it has a reaction trigger. 
After an asset enters play under your control, until the end of the round you get plus two to each of your skills while resolving a triggered ability on that asset. So that's quite a nice effect, right? Because you're going to be hopefully swapping assets in and out. And so that gives it an extra plus two to the to your skills resolving triggered abilities. So that's very nice. Um, Cult Scraps is his signature uh, weakness. It's a, again an asset. It's a zero cost asset. Um, a Cult Scraps cannot be played using a play action. Um, so um, obviously you can use it using his special ability. While a Cult Scraps is in your hand, you get minus two willpower. While a Cult Scraps is in play, you get minus one willpower. So I think the thing with this is that you would get it out onto the table as quickly as you can. So yeah, it really is about messing up his special ability. Once it's in play, then you need a crypt chill or use his special ability the next turn to swap it out for something else. That would be the thing that you would do. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting, I mean, really, as long as you, I mean, the worst outcome would be that you've kind of used up your special ability when you get it, but most likely you would draw it during the upkeep phase, you would play it during your, um, you'd probably play it at the beginning of your, um, your turn. It would sit there and then the next turn you hopefully would have an asset you can swap it out with, that kind of thing. So uh, usually that's probably the way things would work in that way. So that's Occult Scraps. And then finally, he his random, um, his random weakness uh, basic weakness was Dread Curse. Oh, we had five, <laughs> five, five curse tokens to the Chaos Bag. So yes, that uh, that could be quite nasty if he gets that. But anyway, that's his uh, that's his special weakness. So there you are. That's Dexter Drake in a nutshell. Now I had a chat to Dexter in the um, in the trailer. Thank you to Miskatonic Trailers. And as usual, he brought some funny magic tricks along with him as well. Um, which was always good to see. He was a bit disappointed with his performance in um, The Gathering uh, that he didn't get the full six XP at the very least. He's hoping to do well in the Midnight Masks and believes he can. And we'll see how he goes. He's just standing over by the, um, by the house. In fact, the crowds that have gathered around Arkham, some of them are around the house. They're enjoying a couple of uh, an impromptu magic um, performance. So uh, that's quite nice that he's doing that. So there we go. So we're all set up here in Octagon, ready to roll. I'll just read out the agenda and the act deck, and then we uh, will just wait for the horn. So agenda 1A, Predator or Prey, Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you too are being hunted. Action, resign. You don't want to risk taking too long. Head to safety with the information you have gathered and uncovering the conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of this cult and unveil their plans. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. Action. Investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group. Draw the top card of the cultist deck. Find as many unique cultist enemies as you can. Add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance. Note, all, not all six of them are in the cultist deck. There we go. So yes, we're already in easy. We're in standard mode here. And, oh, there it goes. There goes the horn. And Dexter waves to the crowd as a uh, flock of... Um, Birds, I think they're, what are they? They're little um, doves come out of his sleeves and into the air. And uh, we are ready to start episode 42 of season two of the Investigator Games. So, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, we of course want Leo DeLuca. Who wouldn't want Leo DeLuca? 
Uh, we want some offensive spells or weaponry. Shriveling would be nice. And obviously some ways of getting some clues would also be fantastic. So I think if we get all of those three in the draw, I'll be pretty happy um, with that. So let's have a look. Let's draw many. Let's have a look what we get. Draw five. And okay, so there's no Leo de Luca in here. Clairvoyance is pretty good because um, that allows us to investigate using willpower. So I like that. Drawn to the Flame is great because we get two clues right off the bat. So what I might do is I might throw these three in and draw three more and see if we can get Leo de Luca. One, two, three. No Leo de Luca. That's really unfortunate. We didn't get him. He could have made a massive difference at the start. But we did get a sneak attack, we got a switchblade, and we got a holy rosary. Holy rosary is good for boosting up our willpower. So that's not too bad. Um, a few assets there. Yeah, the clairvoyance and the switchblade and the holy rosary. So that helps us with our special ability if we want to discard an asset. But I think I think clairvoyance would be the only one. No, yeah, maybe the switchblade we'd probably you know, um, discard and, um, you know, bring something else in our hand, perhaps. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, a bit disappointing we didn't get Leo de Luca. No shriveling. Hopefully they will pop up. So let's see how we go um, with all of that. So I think first action, let's, um, let's spend four. Yeah, let's spend four and bring out clairvoyance. So we can use that to investigate with our willpower. Second action, let's avail ourselves of the facilities and draw a card and gain a resource. So what do we get here? Tempt fate. Um, okay, add three curse tokens, then add three bless tokens and then draw a card, fast play. Oh, okay, okay. Um, let's do it. Why wait? Let's fast play this thing. So we'll fast play this and we add three curse tokens and three bless tokens. Uh, tokens, uh, control one, control two. Okay, so let's add three curse tokens. One, two, three, uh, bless and three curse. Okay, there's three of each and uh, we get to draw a card. There we go, and we get dark ritual. Yeah, seal up to five, okay. At the end of this phase, you must either spend a resource. Oh, I see, so you can get rid of the curse tokens. Hmm, hmm, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> that was a lot of carrying on. Um, so there we go. So we've got one action left. And I think for the final action, let's go ahead and spend two. And let's bring out the Holy Rosary. So there we go. So we're now rocking a six willpower, which is pretty good, which means, you know, Crypt Chill shouldn't be a problem. So there we go. That was our first round. Um, sort of interesting round. We brought out Clairvoyance. We availed ourselves of the facilities and got Tempt Fate, and we immediately used it so we now have three curse and three blessed tokens in the chaos bag and we drew a card we drew into dark ritual which allows us to seal up to five curse tokens but then you've got to spend resources to kind of keep it going um i'll probably use it for the intellect pip to be honest and um and then we um we brought out the holy rosary so we're now rocking a six willpower so a pretty good start I think. So we'll move into the enemy phase, or yes, the anima phase, as I like to call it. There's no enemies or enemas to speak of. So we move into upkeep phase and we get emergency cash, cash, cash. Yep, uh, we might need that. So there we go. So good. -o. So we move into the first mythos phase. The first doom is down. Let's see what wonders come from the encounter deck. And we start with a hunting shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. Well, we can't spend a clue, so we're going to have to take two damage, which is not great because we don't have that much health. 
uh, generally. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, so let's move into uh, the investigation phase. Three actions onto poor old Dexter. So what are we going to do here? Um, do we want to discard any of the assets we control to play a different asset? No, I don't think we do. I don't think we want to do that. Um, but we could... Well, we don't have to play the Switchblade. It's fast, so we can kind of keep it for if we want to, if we need to use it. So I don't think we need to do that at the moment. We're a bit low on resources, but at the moment, I think we're okay. So I think the main focus at the moment is getting ourselves some clues and getting out some cultists. We don't want to mess around too much. So we're at the house. It's got a, a shroud of two and we are a two. So that's kind of a two versus a two, which isn't great. Now we could use our clairvoyance here and investigate higher. But the first thing I'm going to do is rather than, you know, wasting uh, clairvoyance or do we, uh, maybe we, mm, do we keep it for, because that would be a six on a two. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of see how we go. I'm going to do an investigation. I'm going to throw in the dark ritual. So that's going to give us a three um, on a two. So we're one up. Let's see what the chaos bag has. And it has a minus one. So we succeed there. Woo, that was good. Because I didn't want to use my clairvoyance for such a, a low one. So a uh, low shroud here at the house. So then one will move, Dexter will move up to Rivertown. Look at the lovely river. Uh, as it ripples and bubbles through, though looks though something is moving beneath the surface. Ooh. Anyway, uh, so we're now up at Rivertown. And then for our final action, let's go ahead again and investigate. Let's just investigate straight up. It's a one versus a two, a one versus a two. And the Chaos Bag gives us a blessed token. So we will uh, draw again, draw an additional token. And <laughs> we get a curse token. <laughs> so we will draw an additional one. Yep. And we get a minus two. So after all of that, uh, place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Well, thankfully, there's no cultist enemies. These are now out of play. So they just cancelled each other out. And we ended up with a minus two. So that means we, we failed, unfortunately. <laughs> so that was quite a carry on. But anyway, so uh, yeah, sort of okay. We got our first clue at the house. We then moved to Rivertown and then we uh, failed to get the second clue. So hopefully next time we'll be able to do that and get that the first cultist. So we move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep and we get promise of power. Oh, don't we love promise of power? Yeah, but uh, wow. <laughs> it's it's a good one, but we probably want to keep that for something. And I've just realized no Leah DeLuca and we've got... No no serious offensive spells, so we've just got to be mindful of that. I mean, it's still early days. Hopefully, we'll draw into something. But we move into the Mythos phase. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter... Hello? And the encounter deck has... Ah, Cryptchill, our old friend Cryptchill, has arrived. Well, we are a six. We're a six on a four. Do we want to throw anything in? I don't think so. Let's see how we go. We should be okay. I mean, I could throw in Promise of Power, but... Uh, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to throw Andrew onto the flame. So let's just go six versus a four. Chaos Bag is a minus one. No problem at all. So we are fine. And we can move in to the investigation phase. Three actions on to Dexter. So um, I'm very keen to get this clue, but I'm also keen to try to get ourselves more offensive spells. We're already a third of the way through and we're, we're not really set up for the Mars Hunter. In fact, we're not set up to evade him or fight him. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, but first of all, let's try and get this clue. So let's try again uh, with a two versus a one. So we are one up. Let's see what the chaos bag is. And there's a minus two. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to move to Miskatonic University. Uh, and I'm going to play Drawn to the Flame. I'm going to play Drawn to the Flame. Uh, let's draw from the encounter deck. And we get Mysterious Chanting. Two Doom 
if there are no search the encounter deck for a cultist enemy and draw it okay well that's that's not great but it's not terrible uh, look at all cards let's find ourselves a cultist an acolyte where should we put him maybe back at river town because we probably want to deal with him put a doom on him yep and we get two clues and not only do we get two clues but we get a victory point and we'll put that on there and the crowd goes wild so there we go that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty good start there that was a pretty good round we started at Rivertown unfortunately we failed again to get the clue so I thought bugger this I'm not wasting any more time I moved to Miskatonic University and then I played Drawn to the Flame which brought out an acolyte but we got both of the clues at that location now I've just noticed something here this is actually something I don't usually do this at Miskatonic University, but actually I think in this particular case, I think it's definitely worth doing, which is to look for a tome or a spell card. So I think we will definitely do that um, because if we can draw into a shriveling, I think we'll be in a pretty good space if we can do that. So there you go. Okay, so pretty good round. So let's move into the enemy phase. Uh, enemy is not doing anything. So we'll move into the Mythos phase. We get the Derringer, so we get something in terms of weaponry, uh, but it's not as good as, say, Shriveling or the Sword Cane or something like that, but at least it's something. So there we go. Um, yep. Um, upkeep phase, that was. So we move into Mythos phase. There are now four Doom down. Let's see what the Encounter deck has. And the Encounter deck has <laughs> Wings of Darkness. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so if we fail, we go back. Yeah. Oh. Actually, the biggest problem with Wings of Darkness is actually not failing it because that could be handy because um, we can just take on the um, take on the Acolyte. The biggest problem with it is, is we take yet more damage, so half our damage is kind of soaked up. But the problem is is the best we can do is a three versus a four. It's not worth it, so we might as well fail this. Let's see what we get from the Chaos Bag. We get a minus one, so we fail it. We take a damage and a horror. Yep, might need to pop to the hospital at this rate. Uh, and we end up at um, Rivertown, and the Acolyte is upon us. So there we go. So that actually, you know, that that kind of worked in our favor in the sense of being a bit more efficient i just wish um i just wish we weren't taking so much damage so there we go so let's move in to the investigation phase three actions on to good old dexter we are running out of time but we do need to deal with this acolyte now um the first thing we will do is we will take a fast action i think and bring out the uh bring out the switchblade as a fast action. So we'll bring out the switchblade. The other thing I like about having the switchblade is we can swap it for the Derringer uh, at some stage and it won't provoke an attack of opportunity and the Derringer will only cost us two. So I think that's a nice little exchange, but I think for the moment we'll try and use the switchblade here, see how that goes. Now it's a fight, three versus a three. So we're three versus a three. Now we've got two options here. We could do three versus three and we could, I suppose, chuck in Promise of Power and, and kill the Acolyte. Or we could try and evade him, but that's a two versus a two and then we would have to do a sneak attack. So I think I didn't want to have to use Promise of Power, but I think we're going to have to use it here because the other way would be to throw in the strength and make ourselves a a four and we've only got to do one damage so I'm going to throw in promise of power uh, add a curse token to the bag yep so we're now running at a three four five six seven a seven versus a three so we're four up let's see what the chaos bag has and it already has a curse token so we will draw an extra token <gasps> Minus four. Oh my goodness. Can we get a bless? Zero. So minus four. Oh, okay. Is that all right? I think we might be okay here. Three. 
7. 7 minus 4 is 3. Wow. <laughs> I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we uh, we just succeed and we kill uh, the uh, acolyte. The good news is with that as well is that we, um, we get rid of um, these curse tokens out of the bag. So there's more blessed than curse now, which is good. Whew. Okay, that was our first action. <laughs> um, mm. I'm going to do this second action. I'm going to move back to Miskatonic University. And then for my third action, whoops, for my third action, I'm going to look at the top six cards of my deck. One, two, three, four, wow, five, six. Okay, so top six cards. If a tome or spell, if for a tome or a spell card, add it to your hand. Well, there we go. Shriveling, shriveling. So we can either of those shriveling. So we'll bring that into our hand. We'll put the others back. Unfortunately, um, Leo De Luca was in that lot, but Leo De Luca would pop up again. So that's pretty. That's pretty good. So we've now got shriveling, which we can bring out. Um, we could even swap it out for the switchblade and it'll only cost us a couple if we need to. So that was quite a, quite an eventful game so far. We uh, ended up back at Rivertown. So we used Promise of Power to kill uh, the Acolyte just even though we got two curse tokens. We then um, moved back to Miskatonic University and we used this ability here to find ourselves a shriveling. So that's that's good. Okay, so that's that's very helpful. Enemy phase, no enemies to speak of. Move into upkeep and we get Faustian Bargain, putting more cost to us tokens and getting resources. That could be helpful in a situation where we've got one of those pump cards. Uh, I forget what they're called, but you need resources to pump them. We don't have that at the moment, but um, there you go. Okay, so we will move into the Mythos phase. There are four down now. We are four of six, so we uh, are not far off from the, um, uh, yes, the um, uh, Mars Hunter coming upon us. I'm also just, just aware of how much damage we've taken. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And oh, it has... It has false lead, and this says if you have no clues, false lead gains surge. If you have one or more clues, uh, no, test four for each point you fell by. Oh, boy. Okay, four versus a two. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Okay, this is terrible. This is terrible, and we're at Miskatonic University as well. Oh, no. <laughs> well... Uh, I could throw in, yeah, I'll probably throw in for, for Faustian Bargain. I don't want to throw in Sneak Attack. So that gets us up to a three versus a four. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has. And the Chaos Bag, hello? Chaos Bag gives us a zero. So that's not actually too bad. So we're a three. That, that means we're a three. Uh, versus a four, so we uh, fail by one, which means we lose one of our clues. That could have been a lot worse, but unfortunately, oh dear, we uh, we no longer have the victory point at Miskatonic University. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto poor hapless Dexter. So what are we going to do here? Um, I'm going to use a fast action and get rid of the switchblade and spend two, and I'm going to bring out um, the shriveling. So just to be clear, that's using our special ability, fast action, discard, play an asset, reducing its cost. You can only do that once around. So that saved us some time like that. Um, so that's good. Um, 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 um. We could throw in two clues and see who we get. I'm just concerned that we might get um, that we might get um, our friend Peter Warren. 
So what I might do is I could, you know, oh, I could use, actually, why don't we do this? Why don't we use clairvoyance first? Yes, we'll use clairvoyance first action to investigate Miskatonic University. So we're using our willpower instead of our book. So we're at a six, a six versus a four. If you succeed, uh, I know. So, I mean, I suppose we're wasting it in the sense that we could get an extra clue, but I just would like to get this clue. Let's see how we go. Oh, we fail. Oh, man. Ah, oh, okay. Well, actually, there we go. There's now two clues on the location because we got the tablet. So let's do it again. Let's use our clairvoyance again. So we're a six versus a four. Um, let's see how we go this time. And we get a minus one. So we succeed uh, and we get both clues. <laughs> and we can, the crowd goes wild again. <laughs> and, oops, and we, uh, we get the victory point. And for my final action, I'm going to move off there and move to St. Mary's Hospital uh, here because I think I'm going to heal some damage. So what a weird, this has been a weird game. I tell you what, this has been one of the strangest games I've played. So what a game. So um, we started, we decided to use clairvoyance at Miskatonic University. We failed and dropped another clue. We used clairvoyance again. Sorry, the first thing we did was we replaced the switchblade with, with, um, with shriveling, which was a fast action. We then uh, failed and dropped another clue. We then succeeded and got both of our clues and we've moved to St. Mary's Hospital. So uh, ooh, we can heal some, some, some of our health there. Oh boy, boy oh boy, it's all happening. Enemy phase, no enemies to speak of. We move into upkeep, we get a flashlight. Yeah, that, that could be handy at some stage, but not right what I need right now. We will move into the mythos phase. Five doom down, we are... We are um, we are on the cusp of this moving and we've got no cult. This is the other thing. We've got no cultists out, nobody at the moment. So uh, let's see what the encounter deck has. And of course, uh, now we get, oh man, now we get a hunting night gaunt. Oh boy. Oh, I hate these things. Okay, so we're moving to investigation phase three actions onto Dexter. So what do we do here? What do we do here? Um, oh boy, oh boy. I mean, one thing we could do is we could fight the hunting night gaunt. So actually one of the things we could do is we could replace clairvoyance with the Derringer as a fast action. And um, we could use that to fight the hunting night gaunt we could do that um or i mean and then that would give us so what do we get we get plus two for the attack so we would be fighting at a five versus a three so we got a zero we would do a couple of so that's that's worthwhile but the problem is then we're using up the ammo um for that the other thing is we could shrivel and you know we could probably kill it with a couple of shrivelings. The problem with that is, is then we're in no position to take on the mass hunter. Um, the other alternative is we um, evade. We try and evade the hunting night gaunt, um, <clears throat> and we would have to basically it would have to be a zero or better. So the chances of that are pretty low. So of all of those options, uh, I think getting out the Derringer and using the Derringer is probably the best option at the moment. So I'm going to fast action and spend two, bring out, take out Clairvoyance and bring in the Derringer using our special ability. Yep. Ta-da! Here's a Derringer. <laughs> and um, let's take three actions to shoot so we're going to shoot the um, hunting night gaunt so we get plus two to the attack 
So we are now at a five fight, a five versus a three. So a two up, I think that's pretty good. There's no any doom down or anything. So let's see how we go. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. So we succeed, but we only do one point of damage. There we go. Okay, for our second action, we will go ahead again and fight with the Derringer. Uh, again, we are two up. Let's see what the Chaos Bag gives us. Minus one this time. So we'll, let's have a look at this. We are um, one up. So we we were five, four versus three. So we're only one up. So again, we only do one point of damage. Now we might be lucky here. This is our final action. We, uh, we are a five versus a three. Let's see what we get. Chaos Bag gives us a minus four and we actually miss. Ah, oh dear. I was hoping for a zero or something like that and we could have done the final two. Oh, well, we gave it a red hot go, so that's all we can do. So yes, so a pretty frustrating round. The best option, we brought out the Derringer using our fast action. It's nice that we've been actually using our ability, so I like that. Um, and we shot with the Derringer. We've done a couple of points of damage. Um, so we've got him down by halfway, so that's something. Okay, we move into the enemy phase. Unfortunately, though, we take a damage and a horror. Damage and a horror. Oh dear, we are we are getting low here. This is not looking good. Um, yeah. And then in the upkeep phase, obfuscation. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. That's that's really really good. I'm so glad we got that because that, that's going to save our bacon, I think. Wow. Such a good card for um, for Dexter, for sure. Okay, because what because this Derringer is now useless, but we can use it to bring out the Obfuscation and we can cancel an Attack of Opportunity, which means we can actually heal ourselves some damage. So I'm really pleased about that. No Leo, though. Okay, so we move into the Mythos phase. There we go. Six Doomer down. That goes to zero. That gets flipped. I'll flip the old, and here he is. Oh, hello, Dexter. Oh, dear. Things are looking terrible, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are looking pretty terrible for Dexter. Um, okay, let's bring out the second agenda. Time is running short. We have eight goes to try to do things. Things is well, at least we've got the shriveling on the table. It's not like we're you know, we're, but it's not like we're where we don't have some help here. But before we do all of that, we've still got the encounter phase, the the encounter deck to deal with. Let's see what we get from the encounter deck, and we get a locked door, attached location with the most clues, and that is indeed St Mary's Hospital. So that goes to the back. So that's that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It could have been a lot worse. Okay, we move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Dexter. Now, um, first of all, if we if we don't kill the mass hunter this time, we are dead because we're literally two away. So that's the first thing we've got to deal with is that we, you know, and the thing is he's got six, so we could be lucky and we could get get it all in the three but the problem is if we fail at any step and we'll be running at a six won't we we'll be running at a six um a six versus a four so the chances of us doing that three times in a row you know is possible but the chances are that one of them for some reason won't work so I think the first thing is we use our special ability as a fast action, uh, discard the Derringer, spend the one and bring out obfuscation. So that's a fast action, which of course doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. Thank God. So that's the first thing we'll do. And then, um, I'm going to I'm going to as a first action, I'm going to heal three damage. Now when I go to heal three damage, I of course um, when a, when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity against you, spend a charge cancel. Now 
it's not limited to once a turn, so they would both make an attack of opportunity, so I would cancel both. Um, so, yep, and we heal three damage. Nice. I just realized here, I didn't say it before, but obfuscation is actually fast, but um, I wanted to use Dexter's ability because it made it was cheaper. So, yeah. Okay, so there we go. So we've... We've avoided, we, we've healed some damage, so I feel a bit better now. We, we're a bit more robust. So these next, we've got two actions left. Now, there's a couple of things we could do here. We could actually kill the Hunting Night Gaunt um, because we've only got two actions, so we can't, we can't kill both of them. Uh, sorry, we can't kill the Mask Hunter this time. The most we could do is... Um, uh, four, four points of damage. But what is probably better, uh, first of all, I think, is probably kill the Hunting Night Gaunt, so we're down to one, I think. The only danger with that is, is if we fail, we've only got three charges left on the Shriveling. So I guess the downside is, like we could... It's really hard to know what to do because if we kill the hunting night gaunt, we 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 don't we take less damage, but we've only got three left, which means we all of those three have to land, don't they, on the mast hunter because he's got six points. So I'm thinking we're probably better. Are we probably better taking the extra damage how often can we do this i think we can only do it once yeah Ooh, this is a hard decision so either we risk because it would be a risk if we if we kill the hunting night gaunt and then we've only got three left and we fail once then we're gonna well we've got uh, yeah but the problem is with sneak attack we've only got a um, two agility, so it's a two versus a two. So, hmm. I think we're going to have to risk. I'd rather risk the extra damage than risk um, not landing with the shrivelings. So, I'm going to go ahead and start shriveling the mass hunter. So, next action, we will shrivel the mass hunter. So, we are using a willpower of six. Yeah, a willpower of six uh, versus four. So we're two up. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has. And we missed. There we go. Let's do it again. Do these guys have Retaliate? No. Uh, we will do it again. And we get a zero and we succeed. And we don't take any horror for that. So we do two damage to the Mars Hunter. Well, there you go. I'm really glad I didn't, um, I didn't use that up on the um, Hunting Night Gaunt because that could have been bad. It could still be bad. We have to succeed twice in a row, but hopefully we might draw into something else that we can use. But anyway, we move into the enemy phase. So we take three damage and two horror. Yep. Wow. So there we go. Um, yep. Um, hmm. So let's move into the upkeep phase. Oh, not another flashlight. That was so what we didn't need. Uh, and we move into the mythos phase. First, Doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Wizard of the Order. Oh, boy. Put him in River Town and put a damage on him. Uh, put a horror on him. Oh boy, this is so rough. Okay, we move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Dexter. First action. Let's um, shrivel the Mars Hunter. 
So again, we're a six versus a four, so we're two up. Let's see what the chaos bag has, and it's a skull, so that's a minus one. So that's a success. Yeah, so we do another two points of damage. Second action, we will go again. This is the last chance. Let's see how we go. Chaos bag gives us another skull. Yep. So again, we succeed and we actually, oh my goodness, we do our six points of damage and the mass hunter goes down. Ah! Now, hold on. We got a skull, didn't we? We got two skulls in a row, which means we take two horror. So let's put a horror on the Holy Rosary and we will take a horror. Wow, look at our horror. Okay, wow, 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 wow. Now we've got one, uh, we've got one action left. What do we do now? Um, so there's a couple of things we could do. We could punch the hunting knight gaunt. So we'd be a three versus a three, but he wouldn't die. We could try and evade the hunting knight gaunt, but the chances of that are really low. You know, it would have to be a zero or better. Um... We could draw, I think the best thing to do is to use our obfuscation and draw a card. So for, because we might get something good. So for our final action, we will draw a card, which means we cancel that attack of opportunity and we get a ward of protection. Okay, well, that's something. At least it's a, it's something. <laughs> that's the best we can say. <laughs> it's something. Um Okay, so that was that was a pretty successful round. We managed to kill the Mars Hunter, yay! Um, with two successful shrivelings, we then um, used our third action to draw a card and cancelled the attack of opportunity. Um, we drew into Ward of Protection. Um, so hopefully, we will draw into something better. Uh, enemy phase, we get another damage, so we're up to five damage now. So we are literally one off dying. So, uh, hmm. Upkeep phase. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'll add five curse tokens to the chaos bag. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Tokens. Uh, control two for curse. So one, two, three, four, five. There are now six. Oh my goodness. That's just terrible. Oh. God. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Uh, Mythos phase. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck has an obscuring fog. Put it so we've got a locked door and an obscuring fog. <laughs> oh boy. So let's move into the um uh let's move into the uh investigation phase. Three actions onto poor old Dexter. Wow. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So we're going to die if we don't deal with this hunting night gaunt. Um, so we could either... <laughs> I could, I'm really I'm really running out of options, aren't I? Um, I could fight him. I'm a three, so it'd be a three versus a three. I could make it a four versus a three, and we could try and um, kill him that way. Yeah. The other option is as I throw this in. Oh, we've got a sneak attack, so we could we could. So we, yeah, we could do that. So we could do a four versus a three twice and hope that we <laughs> succeed twice. Uh, the other option is, is we use the water protection to give us a three versus a one, which means as long as we get, if we get a minus one or better. So that improves things. Oh, I've just realized actually it doesn't improve things because there's another doom here. 
on the Wizard of the Order. So that would also be a pretty bad option as well. Um, but it would mean then that we could sneak attack um, the Hunting Night Gold and kill it. I don't know. I don't know which of those. I'm going to try the evasion. I don't think it's going to work, but we'll try. And there's so many, so many other things. So we will throw it in. So we're a three versus a one. Chaos bag gives us a plus one. <laughs> oh no, I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We exhaust the uh, uh, hunting night gaunt. For my second action, I'm going to spend two. Do I spend, hold on. Do I kill it or do I move? Um, I don't think I'd waste my time killing it. I don't get anything for it. Uh, I think I'm better off moving up to north side. Uh, and then from north side we can um we can do a couple of things from north side. I think that's a better option. <sighs> wow. Okay. So move into the enemy phase, nothing happens. We move into upkeep, we get the sword cane. Move into the mythos phase. There are now five doom down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. It's got another locked door. Most clues. Oh, that's going to be here at Rivertown. Okay, so we move into, oh, and then another doom goes down. So there's now three doom down on him. Wow, okay. So we'll move into the investigation phase. Three actions on two. Um, No, oh, now I wish I'd only moved to Miskatonic University because uh, well, what we can do, hold on, the six, yeah, so next time it will go to seven, but then it won't trip. I think that's right. Let me just, okay, so he came out in turn eight. So he came out in turn eight with one, in turn nine, two, two, yep, yep, okay. So what we can do, I'm just thinking about this and we can use Dexter's special ability. If I've got this right. We can move to Rivertown. We can bring out the sword cane And we can use it for an evasion attempt because we can't kill. The sword cane only does um, mm. yeah. And then next time we can kill the wizard of the order. I think that's what we do. Um, yeah, yeah, we can use sneak attack and then we can get away. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we are going to spend, take two actions to move to Miskatonic U University and then Rivertown. We're then going to use our fast action. We're going to um, discard obfuscation. Spend one and bring out the sword cane. And it says with the sword cane, this is awesome, this sword cane. Um, after it enters play, immediately trigger its action ability without paying its cost. So you trigger its action ability. Is that an action then? After it enters play, trigger its action ability. 
Yeah, and then I'm going to evade with the sword cane. Um, so basically, when it enters play, it triggers the action ability, but you don't pay the cost, which is usually to exhaust the sword cane. So uh, it doesn't get exhausted um, when you do that. Um, so um, we can fight or evade, and we can use a willpower. So we are a six, a six versus a two. So it allows us to evade with a six versus a two. Chaos bag gives us a minus one, so we evade successfully the Wizard of the Order. Whew. So there we go. So that's pretty good. So that means next time we can evade again and hopefully kill the Wizard of the Order, and we can do it just in time. Um, yeah. So in the enemy phase, the um, Hunting Night Gaunt moves up to Miskatonic University. I tell you, this has been one of the craziest scenarios I've done, just in terms of all the stuff going on. Ah, oh, and in the upkeep phase, we get showmanship. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't get in the way. Uh, okay. And um, we will move into the mythos phase. There is now four, five, six, seven. There's seven doom down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. An encounter deck at Hunting Shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. We will have to spend a clue. That's okay. Uh, and then another doom goes on to the, um, onto the Wizard of the Order. So we really do have to kill him this time. Okay, so what are we going to do here? So I think the first thing to do is probably use our special ability to bring out showmanship because in terms of evasion, we're going to evade him at a two versus a six. So we're going to be four up anyway. Um, but then again, there are curses in the deck. So I can't afford to risk that. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evade the Wizard of the Order, but I'm going to throw in Showmanship for an extra two. This is just some kind of uh, insurance policy against the um, <laughs> against the curses in the deck. So we are literally now um, running at a five, six, eight. We're running at an eight versus a two for evasion. Let's see what the chaos bag has and a plus one. <laughs> right. So we evade the um better to be safe than sorry. We evade the wizard of the order. Then we will that was our first action. Our second our second action is we will spend two and we will use sneak attack and do two points of damage and we will kill the wizard of the order dead which has bought us some time. And then for our third action, um, oh, where do we go? What do we do? I guess we move to um, East Town. Yes, we move to East Town. Um, and that's our go. So yes, we managed to do what we wanted to do, which was to get rid of that Wizard of the Order, which has given us some extra time. Um, we've still got two clues, so we hopefully will get something we can deal with. Uh, and we got away because, so we evaded, we sneak attacked, and then we got away. Okay. So we will move into the enemy phase. The enemy moves to Rivertown. So we'll move into upkeep and we get another sword cane. Okay. <laughs> we can dual wield sword canes again. Oh, I just want to do that, but I, I, I don't want to bring it out yet because um, you can use it as a uh, fast action. But anyway, that's awesome. I think we dual wielded sword canes in the last one as well. So there we go. Let's move into the mythos phase. Five doom down. We've got a couple of goes left. Let's see what the encant... Oh, you are kidding me. You are kidding me. <laughs> Oh no, not another one. We cannot get away from these guys, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto good old Dexter. So what are we going to do here? Well, we are going to use our fast action here. We're going to discard shriveling. We're going to spend one. And we're going to bring out the other sword cane. We are now dual wielding sword canes. How awesome. After Sword Cane enters play, trigger its ability without paying its cost. We can evade at a six versus a one. 
Let's see what the chaos bag has. So evasion of six versus a one. Chaos bag is a minus four. Uh, nearest doom on the nearest coldest enemy. There aren't any, but we've done a minus four. So we were a six. Six minus four, wasn't that? Six minus four. Yep, that's two. That's still that's still fine. That's right, isn't it? Minus four. We were five. Six. Six minus four. Two. Two versus one. Yep. So we've evaded the second hunting night gaunt. Now for my second action, I'm going to throw in these two clues because I really want to see what we get. Uh, shuffle. Who do we get? And we get Ruth Turner. Wow. Okay. Well, that's actually that's actually could work for us because with the sword cane. And we can actually, we've got both, so we can try twice. So I think if we can get Ruth Turner, I think we can go ahead and resign. So next thing I'm going to do, final action, is I'm going to move to downtown. This is the strangest scenario. I tell you, it's all over the place. I can't believe we're still going, but we are. It's all kinds of crazy things have happened in this game with Dexter. It's been awesome. So what did we do? We managed to um, evade the... We managed to bring out, using our special ability, we brought out another sword cane. We managed to evade. Now, we could have stayed and fought, and fought but why would we do that? We then moved. We then spent two clues to bring out Ruth Turner. And then we moved to downtown. So the idea is, is to get ourselves over to St. Mary's Hospital and use both sword canes to um, to see whether we can uh, get Ruth Turner. But she's a five and we're a six. So we it would be good to get some more abilities to actually evade her. But there we go. Wow. So we move into the enemy phase. This enemy moves up here. So they're together. That's good. Then we move into upkeep and we get clairvoyance. That's not really what I was after. But anyway, um, and we move into the mythos phase, six doom down. We've literally got one turn left. So, oh boy. Because it will trigger, we've got this go. Oh no, we've got this turn and then we've got one more turn after that. So, um, yeah, two turns left. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Encounter deck has a false lead. If you've got no clues, well, I don't, so we get Surge. So we get Crypt Chill. Okay, that's fine. Crypt Chill, test four. Let's go ahead and test four, and we get a minus one, so that's fine. I can't believe there's all these uh, curse tokens in the bag, and they're just, he says, avoiding them. All right, so let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Dexter. Okay, so I think the thing is, is let's move to here. I think we try and get Ruth Turner. So let's move down to here. And then I think the thing to do is to prepare for next time. So draw a card, occult scripts. scraps really oh. oh well anyway we move into the enemy phase so the enemies move I tell you it's been the craziest scenario I think we do this do we do this now oh, I would have to lose something well, let's keep going Let's move into upkeep. We get another shriveling. So we move into the mythos phase. Seven doom a day. Let's see what the encounter deck has. <laughs> and the ghoul priest turns up. Oh, hello. Uh, better late than never. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> so we move into the investigation phase. I kind of wished I'd used occult scraps uh, before because we've got a shriveling and we could have brought out the shriveling and we could have looked to kill Ruth Turner. 
Um, okay, so one thing we could do is we could go in and we could use the Sword Cane twice on Ruth Turner, but we would be do going at a minus two willpower. So we would be basically a four versus a five. So that's not going to work. I mean, we could bring out the occult scraps and replace one of the sword canes. So it's only a minus one and we would be a five versus a five. Hmm. We'd have one chance. The other thing we could do is we could use our special ability to bring out shriveling and we would be running at a four, a four versus a two. which is a much more likely scenario. I'm actually thinking that's the best option. So yeah, I'm gonna, so let's put three actions onto Dexter. So, so as a free action, we will spend two. We will get rid of the sword, one of the sword canes and we'll bring out a shriveling. Yeah, we're just using our special ability. Now, First action, we're going to move into St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, this is like, this is a do or die thing, isn't it? Um, I think it's worth doing, though. So um, we're not going to try and evade Ruth Turner. We're going to try and shrivel Ruth Turner. So what we've got to do here, uh, and I've just realized that if we fail, she's going to defeat us. Oh, it's let's do it. So we're going to be running at a four, a four versus a two, aren't we? Because it's five, six, but occult scraps makes it minus two. I really wish I put occult scraps out earlier, but I didn't think, uh, I just, did, just didn't think that would happen. But anyway, so we're going at a, a four versus a two. So we're two up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what the chaos bag has. It has an elder sign. <laughs> an asset from your player to your hand and then draw a card okay let's return the sword cane to our hand and let's draw a card <laughs> we get leo de luca and um we do we do we no and we do two points of damage We've got one action left. Let's go ahead and um, shrivel again. Final action. So again, we are talking about a four versus a two. There is a hush silence in the audience as Dexter Drake weaves his hands, holding his holy rosary and spells start to form in a miasma around his fingers. And he fires a spell and he succeeds. <laughs> oh my God. And his turn goes down and the crowd goes wild. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this has been the craziest scenario. Seriously. Um, okay, the crowd goes super wild. Uh, Dexter bows to everybody. Enemy phase. Uh, the ghoul priest moves up to River Town. What's all the noise about? And these guys move across to North Side. Uh, and um, and then we move into the upkeep. <laughs> we got the arcane studies, and yes, we move into turn fifteen, the mythos phase, and there we go. The uh, the doom threshold comes on. And the bell's toll. Yes, the bell's toll. There's no time left. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. What a scenario. Oh, my goodness. All sorts of things happened. It was just... It just things just didn't go the way they were supposed to go. All over the place. We didn't get any cultists out. <laughs> barely at all. Um, but we managed to hang on for dear life through most of it. And we managed to bag the Mast Hunter. And we managed to bag Ruth Turner. Um... In the process so we ended up with two three four victory points that's not bad considering all the stuff just crazy things that we went through but 
Uh, there we go. That was an awesome, awesome scenario because it was just so crazy. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Now, next time on the Investigator Games, I think it's uh, I think it's time we took the new Edge of the Earth Investigators through the gathering. Now, just uh, just a heads up, we've already taken Norman through the gathering, so I'm not going to take Norman through uh, again. We've already done that, but I will take the others through the gathering, and then we will um, we will then um, we'll then see how they go, and then once we've done that, we will come back to. Um, come back to season two with all of the edge of the earth investigators and uh, we will take them through the midnight masks so what a what a way to finish finish this one off so thank you very much for watching as i said uh please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time and until then goodbye mm -hmm.